Welcome to everyone, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, good afternoon and also good morning because uh, we have a very special community from London and New York listening today at a new point of view from Linea Pelle Fair. Today is uh, Thursday, 16 July, an intense day of presentation. And let me introduce you today our virtual forum in crafting digital manufacturing. We have a very unique guest that I'm so pleased to introduce you right now, Loreto Di Rienzo, the R&D Director at Dillon Studio. Hi, Hi everybody. Loreto. Hi, everybody. Ciao. And we have Francesco Puzzello, Additive Manufacturing Specialist and Researcher. Hi, welcome. Hi, Orietta. Hi, everybody. So welcome both to speak and to talk about crafting and digital manufacturing. So I'd like to introduce to our community, Loreto Di Rienzo. So Loreto, can you talk a little bit about you and for instance, where are you now? Because it's intriguing the place where you are now. Yes, I am in my factory. Hi, at all. I am Loreto Di Rienzo from Dillon Bomb Factory Manufacturing. We speak from uh, Abruzzo, Chiedi, Italy. Uh, we are, I am the R&D uh, director in Dillon, and uh, we are one manufacturing technology because we use the technology for making the project, for making the dress accessory whole. So, so this means that in these days you were very busy because we started the Milan Fashion Week just a couple of days ago. So I assume this. So thank you that you gave us your time. Yes, thank you uh, for you for the invitation. Uh, it's my pleasure to uh, try to explain what is my know-how, my experience and good hospitality. Uh, um, uh, the uh, possibility for understand uh, what the technology give, which possibility give to the creation. To the creation. Now, this is interesting because the, during our session today, uh, we will see very interesting things. And now I want to give a floor also to Francesco that can share the screen and can also introduce yeah. storytelling because the guests of today are a perfect looking forward to the future, and I can say the future is now. So Francesco, what can you say about your stories? Okay, this is how digital manufacturing and additive manufacturing changed my life, my professional but personal life too. This was a, a long journey, started 15 years ago, when I was working in uh, 3D design, 3D visualization, and in uh, 3D animation for product design, for fashion, for industry, and for furniture too. And I started uh, designing and representing ideas. And then I had an intuition to give more uh, services to my customers too, you know? And so I started to work with additive manufacturing technologies it was uh, 11 years uh, ago, and I started not buying a 3D technology, not um, buying um, a 3D printer, but building a 3D printer. And I realized uh, the first one, the first little system, and with this little system, with a modular um, design, I realized an industrial machine of one for one and a half for one meter. And so I started to work in additive manufacturing to develop new applications and to work also in uh, research and development in consulting and training for additive manufacturing. At the moment, here I am in my home studio, but I cooperate also with National Institute for Nuclear Physics in Italy as um, an expert in additive manufacturing technology. And I work as a researcher, as I said before, and I work as a um, trainer. And uh, you know, in Italy, we had uh, the first and, uh, and uh, the only certified additive manufacturing training that is additive manufacturing um, process manager. And so uh, I wrote the contents of this uh, training. 
and you know I started from my house and now I work also with the with the biggest research center in in the world and um, we work also in communication for additive manufacturing and this is uh, 3D for growth I'm the editorial manager of this hub on additive manufacturing and we used to cooperate with engineers, designers, producers of material, producers of the technologies to work in realizing events and to realize new applications with this kind of technology too. So I tried to talk about my experience in additive manufacturing in, in this kind of uh, cool world to realize and to produce and uh, many projects. This is one um, of the best one, one of the one that I like, uh, and this is a, a project in additive manufacturing technologies and design for environments. So a circular economy project in which we are working on um, plastics, on waste from cities and transform waste, plastic waste in uh, new material to realize furniture for urban furniture for uh, everything that you can find in the square and working in your city. So citizens are again at the center of the city and they can realize it and project and they can design their new city. So I think this is so cool because you show to us uh, something that it's always considered a little bit dream, but this is reality. And for this reason now, I like to go a little bit more in deep in the topic that we want to have today because the connection between Francesco and Loreto it's really the experimental research and the application both of you are applying the digital world but I like now that Loreto can give his side of opinion that it's a explaining a little bit more about the interaction between the manuality and the, the digitality. So when we say realize elements that maybe are not possible, so which is your point of view? What do you do? Allora, every, in every project, the start is the idea, is the stimulation is one concept. This, con this concept uh, uh, is, uh, has many possibilities in the start for transport in the, uh, in the, in the object. And the choice, the technology, is in the uh, know-how uh, capacity of the people. And for this human apport is very important for understanding which uh, uh, technology is better for arrive at the result. In the start, it's not uh, sure if we use a laser or use uh, mold for cut or other te technologies. And this is very important start. After we have a choice of one technology, for example, laser or uh, printed, we have to um, uh, make it the software, the project, the model. And these have a very incredible uh, combined know-how because, for example, uh, we are the first to uh, combine different technologies, uh, laser and print, embroider and print, uh, thermo -weld. we introduce thermo in the uh, in the fashion. And in the, in the start, uh, designer, uh, a client don't know which potentiality this technology has. It is important to show uh, for understand what is possible made. And in this moment, we use the technology for representing one idea. And uh, uh, this, this combination, this uh, manuality is fundamentally for prepare the work or for um, assembling the, 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 the object. Uh, because fashion is one uh, world uh, when uh, it's not possible uh, industrialize very much because every season, because every capsule, because the number of products, production is not uh, uh, is not uh, um, high 
and this for this is important this mixed handmade use the technology choice the technology is give the possibility for arriving one high standard of the quality production price and this uh, connection is the secret little bit in the uh, italian manufacturing because italian manufacturing have one uh, um, long uh, history in the application of technology and when uh, one designer for example asked in the different place in the world with the same technology uh, one uh, example he received back the different result different product different uh, uh, object so Loreto, can I jump inside that you, you see that I like to show some videos in the meantime you were talking because I assume that the way you work with creative designers, it's really to understand a creative vision and then using the technology as a tools and then you mix it. So do you have an example in front of you? Because I see that you have something around you, just to make people yes, understand. This is, this is my, yes, this is my world. You know, I am in the factory and uh, every day I am inside the, the machine, technology, the sample idea. Every time the designer gives uh, one uh, idea, ask me, I want one uh, effort. And, uh, I don't know, everyone effort, for example, this is three different technologies, digital print, thermo welded, and laser cutting. Four have one 3D effect and one net effect. One net oh, net. that's cool. <laughs> oh, for example, this is a, a very interesting new uh, evolution. This is laser and printer inside. This technology is very precise combined the two technologies because mold starts from the same computer, but after is two machines and the capacity and possibility for combine the two work is the know-how, is the idea, is the um, solution for every new application. In this case, we, we uh, talk about uh, decoration. But for example, in case we take one uh, uh, inject pads, we have combined the uh, print, digital print, the thermo -weld and laser, and inject directly inside the pads. And this is very, functionality because it, with this solution it's possible to make a graphics and not the uh, feds uh, inject only in the street but it's possible to make it the graphics and this is completely new and the, the uh, weight is more uh, light because inside it don't have the um, cushion of feds uh, because technology and forever uh, the result in the decoration side, but in the functionality side. This is only one approach of uh, thing. After uh, Francesco speak about sure uh, more compare me about the 3D print. This is one uh, effect, for example, completely new in the 3D print. This is one simulation of the fruits. Uh, but this is completely new effect, effect. And for example, in 3D print technology, we have started a very important project with the uh, strategies, uh, strategies uh, make the machine. And we have one project for introducing the fashion pro, uh, industrial application of the 3D print. And this is one goal very uh, important for us because uh, uh, is one new frontier, and we start with this new frontier for arrive to the industrialized one technology, for, uh, for example. 
So I jump again inside the, uh, your explanation. So what we see in this video is very similar to the sample that you have in your hands right now. Can yes, I in the video I have one uh, different symbol in the 3D print with one shiny effect, with one lenticular effect. And uh, it's incredible how many new uh, effects is possible to make. But we, what is the how or the know-how? Um, designer asked me what we want, which effect, which uh, function. And we chose inside the world of technology what is good for touch, for watch, for uh, make the shape, which technology is used for arrive to the result. Because I think this is very important, our approach, because we are inside the technology. We know what is the limits and the potentiality of technology. Normally, design, fashion design, don't uh, enter it so much inside. And in the same time, the only technology is, is a little bit cold. It's not possible I go to the designer and speak, you want to use the laser, you want to use a 3D print. It's no sense. I have to show the potentiality. For this, we are the ring of connection of the creativity and technology. So in this case, I assume that we need to have a designer that also has uh, engineering knowledge. So for this reason, uh, today we want to share uh, the opinion and the research of Francesco because it's really a combination between the material, it could be leather, it could be textile, it could be a synthetic compound, and then we have the manufacturer, and then we have the digital technologies in different elements, and everything has to be combined all together. So I like now to give the floor to Francesco, because Francesco now can put some more elements to understand the beautiful potential that we, we have already, but maybe we didn't know. Yeah. Isn't it, Francesco, you told me, maybe we are using already this, but we didn't know, and we have these beautiful pieces. Yeah, my experience represents what you said, what Loreto said. I started as a 3D designer, and now I work in research and development, but if you want to work with this kind of technology, first of all, you have to know technologies. As Loreto said, this is a very important thing, because if you know limits of technology, you can go over the limits. It's the only way to use this kind of technology. I want to show you some images from a, a typical training, the approach to a typical training in additive manufacturing. And I want to show some, um, some images. Just a moment, please. Okay. Okay, this is probably the first slide, if you have a training uh, with me, is uh, many people talk about, you know, uh, 3D printing of manufacturing technologies of digital uh, manufacturing, but probably they don't know, they don't really know the process because as you can see from this slide, we talk about 3D printing only in this place, you know, CAM. Okay, we talk about 3D printing. So people used to talk about 3D printing, but they don't know the workflow, how it works. If you want to realize, if you want to touch your idea, you have to start to work in, uh, in research for new materials, for new geometries, optimization. And so it's a long way. It's not a complex, it's not, a, um, sorry, it's not an hard, workflow but it's a complex one and you have to know it for example when we start from uh, um, with a new project we start uh, as sure from with an idea as you know and then the first things that we do is to start to work with materials many years ago we started to work with polymers in additive manufacturing you know the first additive manufacturing system that was sold in the world was an sla system with serial lithography 
from charcoal and 3D systems, and they work with photopolymers. But then we started to work with the metals too, and now we can work also with technopolymers too. So polymers with carbon fiber inside and some metals and many other things. So some exotic materials, we can define it, okay? So now it's, it's a very interesting challenge to start with a new project, with a new application, because we can choose many materials and for each materials we have uh, probably um, hundreds of technology that can work with these materials. But many people talk about manufacturing technologies and they think about the filament, okay, a filament 3D printer. No, it's only one of thousands of technologies, of manufacturing technologies. So, uh, returning again, returning again on, on the workflow, we start from choosing materials then we go to the technology that can work with this kind of materials. We can work, for example, with polymers, but we can work with photopolymers, so a liquid state material, or we can work with filament, so a solid state material, or we can work, for example, with SLS system, with a powder, with a powder of plastic, of polymer, and so it's a solid state, but it's a powder, it's not a filament. So other different technologies to work with this kind of material. Then after that, we start to work on the design. So we don't start from design, we start from an idea. Then we choose materials and technology. And then we go to CAD to design and to design for additive manufacturing. So this is the biggest opportunity for all of the designer of the world. We have a, a white paper and we can start to reimagine, to redesign the world. I'm very excited of that. Now we can do it. If you want to realize something with a new process, with a special process, we have to redesign our minds, first of all, okay? So we can start from a white paper and we can start again a new revolution, starting from new ideas for a new, for a new production system. So after designing, we go into topology optimization. In this case, we used to eliminate all of the materials that we don't need. So we do, we, can, we do a kind of simulation on the function of the parts that we are gonna realize. And so we, we, are, we won't uh, uh, print, we won't realize what um, the material that we don't need. Then we go in CAM. So we start to realize, this is uh, the easiest part of the process. When we have uh, an idea, we, when we have a material, when we have a technology, we only have to push start on a fast, fantastic 3D <laughs> printer. So it's the easiest way. And 3D printing is, is, a, is only, as I said before, a little part of a complex workflow. Then we have a physical object, a printed object in this case, and then we start with post-processing. So we start with the, new finishing so we can give a different aspect to the part or we can give we can give to the part different mechanicals or physical properties you know then we start with the last side of the process the last part of the process there is the 3d scanning and the quality analysis and report and so we know what we produce we know which kind of material we know the process we can work in certification of the application. This is an important aspect of additive manufacturing technology and of digital technologies too. Because if I have to wear a part, I have to be sure of materials that I use, I have to know the processes. And so this is the way to produce in additive manufacturing. So we talk about 3D printing, digital technologies, but the workflow is a, is a complex workflow. It's not an easy workflow, but you can do that, we can do that. Yes, this uh, covered, uh, for example, the experience uh, of Francesco and my experience, for example, in the embodied tool, is know the base of technology, the origin, the history of the technology, because uh, this gives the possibility for manage the technology. Okay? In uh, any case, to make a contribution for evolving the technology. Because, for example, 
we uh, have a collaboration with the different uh, house of technology because in one side we have the market in another side we have the producer of technology and we connected and speak with the producer of technology market going this direction now for example new goals very important sustainability sustainability material sustainability technology is one very big future in this direction yeah so uh, Francesco, do you have any example to show us? Because we like it to stress a little bit that the reality, so the materiality and the application are something that is right now possible. You know, our, uh, our community, it's a community made by designers for different fields. And they want to use this technology, but they also buy materials like leather, textiles, and they apply material in many different fields. So do you have any example that we can see something maybe existing or something they can apply? Yeah, I wanna show you an example that regards the mass production and mass customization. It's a new concept, okay? Because we started to work with uh, 3D machines for prototyping for uh, one object or two objects to, to taste. Now we can talk about digital manufacturing and additive manufacturing for a real production, for a production of millions of parts. I have a video that I want to show you that regards a producer, a producer of shoe, probably you know it, is Adidas, just a moment. Okay. In this case, we are talking about technology um, with a photopolymer. In this case, we are looking to the production of millions of parts for shoes. You know Adidas? Yes, of course. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is what happened. And you can see a new way to produce what you need, when you need, as you need. We knew and we use it, maybe. <laughs> as you can see, we are not talking about uh, the single model, but we are talking about production. They sell shoe all over the world. So we are talking about uh, not prototyping, not prototyping, but about production. And it's a different kind of production because as you can see now we can work on different products. In this case, we can see some helmet for sports. In this case, we can work on scanning on the head and then we can realize different helmet for different health, you know. This is how we work for industry. This is how we work for architecture, furniture. This is how we work in the research and development for industry too. But it is, this is a new way to work also for mass production. So in this case, I like to ask you, Lorraine, uh, how can we use this technology to be incorporated, like in the uh, garments, in the pieces that you are working on? So where 3D printing is a part of the finished product? Yes, for example, uh is possible that uh, we use in many different applications. We imagine in the bags, for example. We imagine that uh, in the dress, in the jacket. And uh, it's possible to take uh, this, for example, application with, uh, um, for example, with the 3D effect and combine and construct the, uh, the pieces to give the functionality. functionality. For example, this is only decoration. But uh, this is only the start. What is this? I don't know. But this is one technical possibility. From this, when I receive the uh, request, it's possible I propose this type of technology 
thought uh, produce one particular effect when this effect is not possible ever in another uh, with another technology and uh, no this all this possibility give possi give uh, uh, probability for uh, entry inside the project with the uh, and arrive at the result what the designer asked in reality. So I have one more question. And what about leather? So we knew that leather is an important material for many different aspects, and mostly because it gave us the opportunity to create long lasting pieces in many different fields. How do you see the, how do you incorporate leather? So uh, can you manipulate leather using this kind of technology or combining different material and leather? Yes, with leather it's possible to uh, think uh, incredible main possibility. You think uh, at the treatment in the top of the leather, for example, and this gives many uh, aspects but many functionality. Or after, for example, this is leather, and after that, one particular decoration. The base of leather is one technology give possibility for customize. Customize one by one, uh, 10, 10 for 10, uh, but te technology give this possibility. The base is same, and after um, uh, make it the customization. But, for example, the technology help for recycle the leather, for reuse the leather. Because in this side, for example, we have a particular project now, it's a little bit uh, secret, but for reuse, for reuse the uh, leather, use it, or uh, this uh, result in the start of the production of the leather, and different project for uh, our waste zero. Uh, about this, um, this leather product. Same is possible, for example, with technology. Uh, now I will tell one sample, but maybe the 3D effect, the molding, the shaping leather. Um, and this is uh, one possibility for uh, arrive to not uh, uh, cut and stitch or cut the thermal welding and assembling the pieces. My is construct in one shape. Is one completely different uh, idea. This is a little bit more uh, technology used in the um, in the automotive, for example. Uh, but in the fashion, uh, this technology is not entered just now. But uh, this gives many solutions. Many solutions. Uh, really, uh, is one infinitely possibility. Uh, for example, this is one uh, underwear. Under Particularly, is shaped, is shaped, is constructed up one form. But this is one normal material. This is possible. Is leather too? Yes, yes. So exciting! I would like to see to see more and touch the material. And of course, I want to tell to all of our community that we will see physically one day for sure because we assume that technology is beautiful online, but we want to also touch all the elements for sure. So now I want to share again my screen because I have another question, maybe to Francesco. So the user robot, so how do you see the user robot right now? Uh, for my personal, personal point of view, I think that robots, cannot be a substitute of human. They can help us to do something. They can help us in uh, terms of uh, repeatability, you know? If I want to repeat the same process for a million of times, I don't have to waste my time. <laughs> a robot can do that for me. But if I have to think about the way to realize this kind of application, this is something that a human can do and only a human can do in the right way. I started uh, working in, in technology, you know, as a passionate, as, as an enthusiastic of technology, but uh, I'm sure that uh, human is the center of this process, first of all. 
machines can help us to realize something, but we have to think about the machine work, first of all, we have to choose, we, we have some strategical shoes in a, in a process, in the workflow. And so you cannot do that with other human, but robots can help us to do that, not in a better way, but we can do the same things for, uh, for more time. And so we, we can use it, why not? Many people say to me, if we work with other manufacturing technologies, Many people will, will lose their work. I'm not sure about it. No. We need humans before, during, and after the process too. As, uh, as you say before, as you see, as you saw before from the, um, from the scheme, from the slide, the machine works only in, uh, in a little part of the process. The other parts of the process are driven by human, first of all. Thank you for this. And now I like it to open this, uh, uh, this sentence, yeah, this opinion, which I know Loreto love in a particular way. Which is your opinion about robot, Loreto? Yes, we have experience about robot. We have a project about robot. For me, uh, the robot is uh, not one substitution of the human people. Absolutely, for me, robot and for make what human don't have a possibility. You think about the precision. Think about when we have to pick and place a particular object, a reconstruction of particular combination of the form. And people with the hand don't have a possibility. And up of this arrive a robot. For make what different is not possible make. For me, the technology is one instrument for help the human think. Is one instrument. Technology is for many people have to manage technology, and uh, same one chisel, same one needle. Is it uh, both have same uh, uh, same application for me? Perfect. So means that for us technology is a means to realize what the person can achieve. So it's a tool, has the art. Uh, previous time before we use a painting and sculpting by hand. Use some new tools to do our sculpture and to do our painters. So I really enjoy to talk with you both it was intriguing to me so much and I'm sure every one of our community which is listening appreciates so much. So I renew for all the community that we will see physically next September for sure. I, I wish that people can also come physically to Milan and to meet Francesco Loreto invite you if you can come and I invite all the community to a new point of view. Grazie Francesco, grazie Loreto. Thank, thank you, so thank much. you very much and goodbye Paul. Thanks a lot thank for your time. <laughs> grazie, bye. Ciao. Ciao.